Good morning. We'll begin in uh, just another minute. Okay, let us begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will show forth thy praise. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Transgression speaks to the wicked deep in his heart. There is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes that his iniquity cannot be found and hated. The words of his mouth are trouble and deceit. He has ceased to ask, to act wisely and do good. He plots trouble while on his bed. He sets himself in a way that is not good. He does not reject evil. Your steadfast love, O Lord, extends to the heavens, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your righteousness is like the mountains of God. Your judgments are like the great deep. Man and beast you save, O Lord. How precious is your steadfast love, O God. The children of mankind take refuge in the shadow of your wings. Our Bible reading this morning is from Genesis chapter 44, a continuation of the story of Joseph's brothers seeking relief from the famine in Egypt and their reunion with their brother Joseph. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack. I am reading the wrong one. No, no, I'm sorry, that is the right one. Then he commanded the steward of his house, fill the men's sacks with food, as much as they can carry, and put each man's money in the mouth of his sack, and put my cup, the silver cup, in the mouth of the sack of the youngest, with his money for the grain. And he did as Joseph told him. As soon as the morning was light, the men were sent away with their donkeys. They had gone only a short distance from the city. Now Joseph said to his steward, Up, follow after the men. And when you overtake them, say to them, Why have you repaid evil for good? It is not from this that my Lord drinks, and by this that he practices divination. You have done evil in doing this. When he overtook them, he spoke to them these words. They said to him, Why does my Lord speak such words as these? Far be it from your servants to do such a thing. Behold, the money that we found in the mouths of our sacks we brought back to you from the land of Canaan. How then could we steal silver or gold from your Lord's house? Whichever of your servants is found with it shall die, and we will also be my Lord's servants. He said, Let it be as you say. He who is found with it shall be my servant, and the rest of you shall be innocent. Then each man quickly lowered his sack to the ground, and each man opened his sack. And he searched, beginning with the eldest and ending with the youngest. And the cup was found in Benjamin's sack. Then they tore their clothes, and every man loaded his donkey, and they returned to the city. When Judah and his brothers came to Joseph's house, he was still there. They fell before him to the ground. Joseph said to them, What deed is this that you have done? Do you not know that a man like me can indeed practice divination? And Judah said, 
What shall we say to my Lord? What shall we speak? Or how can we clear ourselves? God has found out the guilt of your servants. Behold, we are my Lord's servants, both we and he also in whose hand the cup has been found. But he said, Far be it for me that I should do so. Only the man in whose hand the cup was found shall be my servant. But as for you, go up in peace to your father. Then Judah went up to him and said, O my Lord, please let your servant speak a word in my Lord's ears, and let not your anger burn against your servant, for you are like Pharaoh himself. For your servant became a pledge of safety for the boy to my father, saying, If I do not bring him back to you, that I shall bear the blame before my father all my life. Now, therefore, please let your servant remain instead of the boy as servant to my Lord, and let the boy go back with his brothers. For how could I go back to my father if the boy is not with me? I fear to see the evil that would find my father. This is the word of the Lord. Our writing this morning is from the Apology of the Augsburg Confession. Throughout the Prophets and the Psalms, this worship is highly praised even though the law does not teach the free forgiveness of sins. The Old Testament fathers knew the promise about Christ, that God, for Christ's sake, wanted to forgive sins. They understood that Christ would be the price for our sins. They knew that our works are not a, a price for so great a matter. So they received free mercy and forgiveness of sins by faith just as the saints in the New Testament. To this point belong those frequent repetitions about mercy and faith that appear in the Psalms and the Prophets. For example, Psalm 133, 130 verse 3 says, If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Here David confesses his sins and does not list his merits. He adds, But with you there is forgiveness. Here he comforts himself by his trust in God's mercy, and he refers to the promise, I will wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. This means, because you have promised the forgiveness of sins, I am sustained by your promise. Therefore the fathers also were justified, not by the law, but by the promise and faith. It is amazing that the adversaries diminish faith to such a degree even though they see that it is everywhere praised as a great service. For example, Psalm 50 verse 15 says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. God wants himself to be known. He wants himself to be worshipped, so that we receive benefits from him and receive them because of his mercy, not because of our merits. This is the richest consolation in all afflictions. The adversaries ban such consolation, when they diminish and disparage faith and teach only that by means of works and merits people interact with God. We'll join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Wednesday morning prayer follows the, the great litany. This is based, ours from the hymnal is based on Martin Luther's uh, 1529 revision after he removed uh, all the erroneous and parts uh, such as invoking uh, the saints for protection and so forth. And it's also based on the English translation from 1544 by Thomas Cranmer. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, 
have mercy. God the Father in heaven, have mercy. God the Son, Redeemer of the world, have mercy. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy. Be gracious to us, spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us, help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from pestilence and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. Good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, good Lord. To rule and govern your holy church, to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To raise those who fall and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak-hearted and the distressed, we implore you to hear us, good Lord. To give to all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and graciously to hear our prayers. We implore you to hear us, good Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, we implore you to hear us. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, have mercy. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world, grant us your peace. O Christ, hear us. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, our great high priest, cleanse us by the power of your redeeming blood, that in purity and peace we may worship and endure your holy name. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, give us grace to trust you during this time of illness and distress. In mercy, put an end to the pandemic that afflicts us. Grant relief to those who suffer and comfort all who mourn. Sustain all medical personnel in their labors and cause your people ever to serve you in righteousness and holiness. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We join together in Luther's morning prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings and life may please you. 
for into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. May God bless your day. Thank you.